Hello, my name's Keith Rucker. It's good to be back out in the shop today uh, after a little bit of a hiatus over the last couple of weeks where I've just been really busy uh, with my job, my real job. I've uh, been on the road traveling a lot and uh, as a result I basically have uh, not been able to get out in the shop the past three weekends. Uh, so it's now uh, uh, where I am, am finally able to get back in the groove of things and uh, it's, it's good to be back out here today. So I've got a little project that we're working on. I thought I'd uh, uh, share with you guys uh, today. Uh, this is kind of something that has just come up that has kind of risen to the top of the priority list out here at the museum. So to give you a little background, uh, here in about a week, a little over a week from now, uh, the museum will be having their annual Folklife Festival, which is one of our big events that we do each year where we're, people come in from all over, the whole museum's going, a lot of different activities going on. Uh, and this year at our Folklife Festival, our hopes and plans are to actually uh, get our steam-powered sawmill back online and running again. So about five years ago, our boiler that powers the sawmill, the antique boiler that we had, uh, was condemned uh, due to some safety issues. And um, anyway, it, it wasn't anything that was just terribly unsafe at the time, but just over the years, uh, the, the original boiler that we had was, I think, made in the late 20s, early 30s time frame. So it, it, was, it was getting very old. It's an old riveted boiler. Uh, it wasn't built to modern boiler codes, and uh, we had some issues that start, were starting to become a problem on it. And as a result of that, we basically had to take it out of service. Uh, so over the past five years, our sawmill, our steam-powered sawmill, has been completely down, uh, has not been able to run. Uh, we were able to finally successfully raise the money required to have a new boiler built, uh, and we got a, a brand new boiler uh, manufactured uh, that was basically an exact copy of the antique Frick boiler that we had down there before, except it is a modern boiler that is built to modern code. Uh, so it's a, a welded vessel instead of riveted. Uh, we had it built by a gentleman by the name of Jonas Stutzman up in Ohio who is an expert boiler maker that does a lot of uh, boilers for uh, restoring antique uh, 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 machinery, uh, old traction engines so forth, and does a very detailed job of getting something that is very historically accurate. So even though the boiler is built to modern code, it looks just like the old boiler. Uh, he even went to the point of putting fake rivets on there to make it look like it was riveted when actually uh, it's, 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 was, is a welded, more modern code built boiler. So that's the good news. Uh, we got the boiler in a, a, a little about a week ago. Uh, I've actually been up here a lot this past week since I've been uh, back home and not on the road traveling on the, on, in the evenings helping to uh, uh, get the boiler hooked up and connected to the steam engine, which is a job in itself. Uh, with all the, the, the pipe fitting that has to be done. Uh, we've got that pretty much ready to go now. In fact, uh, we hopefully will be test firing it tomorrow. Uh, so uh, uh, very soon we'll be hopefully getting this thing up and running again. So we're really excited about that. But that kind of brings us to the project at hand today. So when we were starting to put everything back together, we got the, the, the steam whistle that goes on our sawmill and uh, we realized that we had some issues with it and actually they had some issues with this whistle uh, back before they, they, the, the sawmill was taken out of operation five years ago uh, but before we put it back on we wanted to do some repairs to this whistle so um, it's kind of hard to see probably in the video but uh, just to kind of give you, you got the little lever here which uh, has a, a valve, there's a little valve that goes in here that seats up, there's a spring loaded thing behind that that, that keeps it normally closed when you pull this handle, it pushes the valve open. That allows the steam to come through the whistle, which blows the whistle. Well, the part that holds the spring and keeps it on there is this little plug that goes into the back. And, and this plug uh, is really in, in poor shape. In fact, uh, it had been repaired at some point in time, very poorly repaired, uh, in my opinion. Uh, but they, to get it functioning again, but it's basically the job at hand. We've got to make a new plug uh, to go in here to replace this one here that is really uh, just uh, in, in terrible shape, and uh, we're leaking a lot of steam around it. Also, the, where the, the, the two pieces come together right here, uh, so this plug will just screw into the, the whistle body. Uh, we're going to have to resurface this uh, seat here where the two come together because it's leaking steam around that. So. Uh, this was all originally made out of brass, uh, probably red brass, although I've got a piece of yellow brass 
uh, that I'll be turning this out of uh, and making the new plug. So the job there is uh, we'll have to uh, put a square, a three quarter inch um, a square um, cap on this end where you can put a wrench on, tighten it up. We'll have to make a nice square seat on this side and then thread this. It's an oddball size thread. Uh, this is 7816 and I pulled out my machinery's handbook and that is not a standard size at all so we'll be turning this thread on the lathe. At first I thought this was a pipe thread but after doing some measurement and stuff it's just a straight thread uh, so we'll just be threading that on the lathe uh, and that will screw into the, uh, the whistle body here and again we'll have to reseat the top of this uh, to get a good fit. So that's the project at hand today. This is kind of a top priority. Uh, because we need to get this on the sawmill and ready to run by next Saturday uh, is our hopes and plans anyway as long as we don't run into any unexpected problems in getting the sawmill up and going. Uh, toward the end of the video uh, I will probably take some and show you the new boiler uh, that we've got installed over there uh, so you guys can see take a look at that but uh, for right now let's get started on making this new plug. All right, so we're set up here on the milling machine. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put the little uh, square section on here for the, the wrench to go on. Uh, it's just gonna be easier to machine this on the bar. So we're gonna go ahead and machine that and then we'll turn everything below this and then I'll just uh, park this off later. They won't have to worry about coming here and trying to chuck up a small piece to, to cut this uh, the square thread on. So um, one thing I want to mention is this vise. We, I get a lot of questions about this vise. Uh, this is a vise that's made for, for uh, holding um, a round stock like this. You can see it just has the, uh, uh, the, the V grooves in here on each side. It's an interesting vise. I, I, I found this a little over a year ago. I actually bought a bunch of vises from a machine shop that was going out of business. And uh, this was on the pallet of vises that I, I bought. I didn't really know what it was at the time. I, it just came with everything. But uh, it's interesting in that when you adjust the screw down here on the end, it moves both of the, the, the uh, jaws in at the same time so that uh, you, once you get this thing centered up, you can actually change the diameter of uh, the stock that's in here uh, and it will automatically center it up each time. So uh, uh, I, I get a lot of questions. People want to know who made it, where it came from. Uh, there's no markings on it that I've been able to find, no name on it anywhere. So I really have no idea who made this. Uh, if they're still available. I haven't ever seen any of these in the catalog. If anybody knows anything about this vice, I'd be interested in just finding out more about it. So if you, if you uh, know who made it or whatever, or you're familiar with it, uh, shoot me a, a, a message or whatever, because I'd be interested in finding out a little bit more about it myself, because I do get a lot of questions, but uh, no idea who made it or anything. So we've got this in here. Uh, I'm just gonna cut a half inch uh, uh, wide uh, square section in here so we're going to touch this off we'll drop it down a quarter of an inch which should be the right diameter uh, and then I'll just use a square to square it up uh, to, uh, to cut off four sides uh, just real quick and easy so let's get going. Basically I'm just going to touch off here I've got to drop this down about a quarter of an inch uh, this is brass it machines pretty easily so we'll just uh, cut this all in one pass and then I'm going to use a, a square uh, to just rotate it uh, 90 degrees and uh, and then we'll just uh, make the four cuts and go. So I'll start by touching off. Uh, we'll just raise this up until just barely get it to cut. Right there. And uh, zero this out. Raise this up 250 thousandths, 100, 250 right there. And uh, perfect. All right, so we got the uh, the uh, head put on there, the, the square head put on there. Now we're going to turn this down to uh, one inch, 150 thousandths. Uh, I think we're at an inch and a quarter to start with, so we'll turn that diameter down a little bit. And uh, go ahead and cut those uh, threads on there in just a bit. That's 
just fine there. That length is a little long. We'll go ahead and just uh, face the front of this down a good bit. Cut the uh, diet or the, the depth of those threads will be three hundred thousandths. So that's square and touch off. Make this seven eighths, eight seventy five. So we got about two hundred thousandths to go. All right, that's right on the money. All right, we're ready to start threading this. So I've got this set up on a sixteen threads per inch. Uh, this is turned down to seven eighths of an inch, and uh, so we'll come in here and do a scratch test, uh, check it with a pitch gauge, and uh, go ahead and put these threads on here. Like 16 threads per inch. All right, so we've got the uh, plug pretty much finished now. Um, you can see the original one that was kind of in pretty rough shape. Um, originally, that was a square head on top, but uh, like I said, at some point in time, they had to, to, to do some work on this. I think what he told me that they had to do before was they didn't have a way to make a new one. So they literally just brazed this whole thing up and filed it down, used a hacksaw, whatever they could to get the square head back in the top. And uh, they had to work on the threads, uh, which were really kind of eaten up on there now, uh, but without a tap or a die or anything, it was a it was a chore. So, bottom line is, is this uh, this fit in here was just uh, leaking steam real bad. So now we've got a brand new one that's ready to go. So uh, the hole in the bottom, there's a spring in here, and um, this is the the valve that goes inside the uh, the body of the whistle here. And the uh, spring basically keeps uh, keeps it shut at all times until you uh, use the valve over here, the whistle valve. Um, see, let's just zoom out a little bit where you can see this a little bit better. So um, you can see the spring keeps that valve closed, and whenever you pull that, it pushes pushes it open so that the steam goes through the whistle. 
So, um, we got the plug finished now. Now the, the next challenge on this project is, is uh, this surface here is just really, really rough and uh, we need to have a good uh, flat surface between these two so that we get a, uh, a, a seal so the steam doesn't come out. Uh, so we're going to have to resurface this and get a flat surface on there. So that'll be uh, the next process. And to do that, uh, excuse me for reaching in front here. Here we go. So to do that, I have this uh, counter bore. And uh, this counter bore is made where you can put a pilot inside of here for whatever size you're going to pilot to. So I'm going to make a pilot that basically is the same size as this valve stem. And then we'll let that guide uh, this... Uh, counter bore in here and then come in there and just touch the surface of that in the mill uh, and hopefully clean that surface up and get a a flat surface that is perpendicular uh, to the bore. That's the plan anyway. So uh, I've got the uh, the counter bore here. This is a inch and uh, three eighths counter bore. I actually just purchased this for a totally different job and this is going to be the perfect tool to, uh, uh, to do this uh, job with. So uh, but I need to make a, a custom stem that fits inside of here that's the right diameter uh, to pilot this in there. And that'll be our next step. We'll make that on the lathe. Okay, so what I did I, off camera is I just turned a um, little shaft to go up here. It's a 3 8 inch up inside this body. This was 0.358 um, down here. Uh, and that just basically allows me to drop this... Um, cutter directly in here and I just uh, using my hands I don't have anything big enough to chuck this into my uh, uh, milling machine so I'm just kind of using my hands to to get as smooth as a finish on here as I can and I'm getting a little bit of chatter but I think it's going to be smooth enough so anyway I've already kind of done that um, I'm happy with that uh, the next thing I'm going to do is this is the actual valve uh, that goes in here so I'm just going to take some lapping compound and uh, put on this valve and uh, we're just going to make sure we've got a good seat on here since we got it apart we might as well go ahead and, and uh, lap that that valve in there to make sure we got a good good fit so I got a little bit of coarse lapping compound on there I'll drop that valve down in to there and this just takes a little screwdriver uh, to engage this and um, we'll just lap that right into place there. And I've actually already done some of this so uh, the bulk of it's already done. You can see I've got a nice clean uh, surface on there. I'm going to take this over to the parts washer, get this cleaned out inside there, and I think this will be ready to go back together. And I wasn't very satisfied with the surface that I got off of that cutter. Uh, I am satisfied that I got a, a square shoulder put on here, but it just left kind of a little bit of a chatter mark. So what I'm doing now is, is I'm basically just taking a, uh, a flat piece of uh, high-speed steel uh, with some very fine sandpaper, and I'm just kind of lapping this in place right on the uh, on the part and trying to smooth out that rough surface. It appears to be working pretty good. I'm, I'm fairly confident that I'm going to be able to keep this uh, in the right plane and uh, hopefully this is going to give me a good smooth surface to work with. I've just about got all those little marks out. It didn't take a whole lot uh, but I'm reading real close. We'll finish this up and uh, give it a try. Alright so um, we've got that surface now nice and smooth. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, I am feel pretty confident that's going to seal up good. So um, we'll just drop our valve in here. That has been lapped and uh, it looks real good. I've gone to my parts washer to clean that out real well. Uh, we'll put the spring in here and uh, thread this new uh, part in. Now, 
hopefully that's going to seal everything up. So that's got that in place. Spring appears to be working good in here. And uh, of course that's the button that you'll push to, or the lever will push uh, when you pull the handle on there. So hopefully this is all going to seal up. And uh, we'll go ahead and put the rest of it together and give it a try. All right, so I'm putting this back together, and uh, this is the uh, bracket that holds the, the whistle lever here. And uh, there was a, a bolt that goes through here, or nut, yeah, a little a screw, I guess, that goes through here that holds this together. And uh, the inside here is just worn out. We had a lot of flop in this uh, lever. I wanted to try to get some of this taken out. Uh, the head is just toast on this uh, piece here, so, I, so I'll just replace this little screw, no big deal. Well, I go to measuring it, and guess what? Uh, another oddball size. This is a quarter inch with a 24 threads per inch. Who ever heard of such? So uh, anyway, I took a quarter inch bolt, uh, I, a longer one, I cut it off, and I actually threaded the uh, 24 inches on, or 24 threads per inch on the, on the lathe, and uh, hopefully uh, this is gonna go right in here, and uh, we'll be ready to go with this thing. All right, so I'm not crazy about uh, replacing that with a hex head bolt or nut or bolt, yeah. Um, but quite honestly, I just don't have time to make a, uh, a proper screw for it right now. Um, we're running under the gun. We gotta get this project done. So, uh, but that looks like uh, that's gonna work. Let's go ahead and put the rest of the whistle together and we'll pipe it up and give it a, a try. All right, so uh, here we go. Let's give it a try, see how she sounds. All right, sounds good. That's just running on compressed air, but uh, that ought to do great on the on the on steam. So I promised you guys I'd show you a picture of our new boiler at the sawmill so uh, this is a, a brand spanking new boiler built by Mr. Jonas Stutzman up in uh, Ohio Middlefield Ohio and uh, we just got this in last week and uh, have been getting it, everything all plumbed up so cutting all new pipes and threading it and doing all the pipe fitting and getting everything ready to go this is our uh, 25 horsepower Atlas steam engine over here that this will run uh, on the sawmill so today is the first time we've ever had fire in this boiler and as you can see we got steam coming out of a handhole. We're just doing a, a, a boil down treatment on it today, uh, boiling it out for the first time. We put some chemicals in there that will help just get the inside of the boil, boiler all clean uh, and then tomorrow we're going to seal it up and actually pressure it up for the first time and, uh, and try, this, uh, try this new boiler out and hopefully uh, get our engine running and uh, check out the sawmill. It's been about five years since the sawmill has run, so we don't know what we're going to run into when we start getting all this hooked up. But uh, uh, our goal is uh, to have this uh, running uh, for display here in about a week uh, during the uh, Folk Life Festival here at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture. So as you can see, the boiler looks great. Uh, very nicely done. Uh, it, we copied our original Frick boiler. Uh, and actually some of the castings and, and parts off of it uh, are right off that old Frick boiler. Mr. Stutzman uh, actually took the old boiler up and made an exact copy of it. Uh, for those people that know boilers, you see the butt strap across here with the rivets in it. Uh, that's just all cosmetic. Uh, this is a completely welded vessel 
up to modern code uh, but he went in and put all the uh, rivets on uh, attached them to the surface they're not actually in going into the metal of the boiler uh, so that it looks like a uh, early riveted boiler which is what we're trying to represent here at the museum so here's the of course the front frick eclipse um, and like I said this is a pretty much an exact copy of the old original boiler so hopefully we'll have some video of uh, the engine running and the sawmill running here pretty soon we're uh, excited to get this going again so looking inside the firebox you can see the tubes that go up through the front of the boiler um, well, we can see the top if you look in the very back you see a little plug coming down that's a fusible plug and uh, that's a safety feature in these old boilers so there's a plug that's in there that's hollow uh, and that plug is actually filled with a uh, a uh, metal like tin or something that melts at a lower temperature and uh, if the water actually comes off the top of the crown sheet on the top it'll melt that uh, metal out and basically cause all the water and the steam in the boiler to go down into the fire and extinguish the fire and that's just a safety feature uh, on, a, on a boiler like this you should never let the water drop over the top uh, or below the top of that crown sheet at the top or that crown sheet can get red hot and if you put cold water on top of that, uh, the contraction of it real quickly can cause the uh, boiler to split open and that's what causes boiler explosions which are never a good thing. So anyway, that's the fusible plug in the back, which again is just a little safety feature uh, to hopefully prevent that from ever happening. So this is kind of the operator side of the boiler here where he, he keeps an eye on things are going. Of course, you see the steam gauge. Right now, we have the hand hold out in the top, so it's not building up any pressure. Uh, this uh, boiler's got a pop-off valve that will pop off at 150 pounds per pressure, or uh, pounds per square inch of pressure. Uh, and then, as you're running a boiler, really the most important thing is that you keep the water level, again, above that crown sheet. And you see here the sight glass. Uh, the sight glass that's on here uh, allows you to see the water level in the boiler you can see it bouncing up and right down right there uh, and by looking at that you can see how much water you have in the boiler and when the water level starts to get down low uh, you use the injector to inject it in there so this is just a visual sight glass uh, there's two valves above it and below it should that glass break you can shut those valves and that will shut the steam down and behind it you see the the three other valves there those are called tricox uh, t-r-y cox uh, and they're for trying out to see where the water is. This is just a manual way of seeing the water level in the boiler. So you can open those valves up and when it's under steam, uh, you can tell by whether you just got pure steam coming out of it or uh, water or a wet steam coming out of it. You can estimate uh, the water level on those three valves there uh, by just looking at the steam coming out of that. So that is your backup uh, for checking the water level in the boiler. Uh, again, should the, the uh, glass break in the sight glass and you need to do it manually, uh, that's just another way of doing it. Or if for some reason you don't trust your sight glass, if you think it may be stopped up or something, you can use the uh, manual tricox uh, to check the water level. And then on this side of the boiler, uh, you see the injector right here. Uh, this injector is what is used to actually put fresh water into the boiler. Uh, so this is a pin berthy type in injector and what happens here is you take steam coming out of the steam dome it goes into the top of the injector down here uh, there's a nozzle in there uh, and then coming up out of this barrel is a suction pipe so this barrel has water in it and as the steam goes past that suction pipe coming into the side it actually pulls the the uh, water uh, sucks it up out of the barrel and injects it in there so that constricts down uh, the steam constricts down, kind of like putting your thumb over end of a water hose, creates a venturi effect, uh, which creates a pressure gradient, which again sucks the water out of the barrel, and then out of the back, going in to the back back there, that's where the water is actually injected into the, the boiler itself, uh, coming out of the back there, and that goes up into the front. So that's how you uh, manually put water in this boiler using an injector. Uh, this is all done manually on our antique boiler set up here. Uh, in uh, modern setups, this is all automatic. The water level's monitored automatic, and they usually use pumps to pump the water in. Uh, we're using an injector here, and uh, again, 
just true to how this boiler would have been used in the uh, late 1800s, early 1900s. It's all operated manually uh, here. So, uh, but this injector is basically what allows you to put uh, fresh water into the boiler while the boiler is under pressure. So if you got 150 pounds of pressure on there, you have to have the fresh water coming in at a pressure greater than that. And uh, again, by using that Venturi effect and uh, constricting down that steam coming in there, uh, we're able to actually create a greater pressure, suck the water, the cold water in, and uh, put it into the boiler. Okay, so that'll be a wrap. Uh, we got the boiler whistle, or excuse me, the whistle here uh, rebuilt, uh, made the new plug, uh, relapped the, uh, the valve in here, and uh, made a new quarter 24 <laughs> bolt. And you run into all kinds of stuff working on this old equipment. Uh, but this whistle is now restored. Uh, it's ready to go back up on the sawmill uh, and hopefully give us many more years of uh, service. So anyway, there you go. That's a quick little video of a uh, little uh, on short notice project we did out here at the museum. Uh, I'll be out here again tomorrow, uh, probably mostly working over on the engine in the sawmill. Uh, don't know if I'll have a lot of time to shoot much video over there, just depending on how things go, but hopefully we'll be able to share a little bit more video with you guys on the, uh, on the sawmill as we get that going and uh, hopefully get the Folklife Festival behind us and I can get back on to uh, some of the other projects uh, that we got going on out here. Uh, also need to shoot a little uh, machine shop talk video. I'll probably do that. Uh, over the weekend. Uh, got a lot of just little things I want to show you, some, some uh, things that have come in the mail in the past few weeks, some viewer appreciation things. Uh, got some uh, uh, little toys that I picked up along the way, uh, so I'll probably do that in a separate video and uh, show you some of that kind of stuff that's gone on over the past uh, three weeks. Uh, while I've been pretty much too busy to shoot video, I've been on the road and out of town a lot, but uh, still uh, quite a few things have accumulated that I want to share with you guys. So uh, we'll make this a cut. Thanks for watching. Uh, I appreciate everybody out there who subscribes and uh, keeps track of what's going on. Thank you.